Well, good evening, everyone. Um, we've had a whirlwind of a, of a week, really. Um, we are absolutely delighted to have won the licence from Ofcom. And um, when Tom started um, sort of trying to convince me to come uh, and talk about it, what he said he wanted me to focus on really was the process that we went through um, and actually how we approached the bid. Um, and then, of course, ending up with um, what opportunities, now that we've won the licence, that sort of presents to everybody, potentially in the creative community that's here. So those of you from the TV industry um, probably know this, but I thought I would start with um, some basic information just in case there are people here who didn't realise what went on. Um, Jeremy Hunt, what a great picture, um, uh, former culture secretary and now no longer in the post, had a pet project called Local TV. Um, there have been numerous discussions over the last two years. Obviously, Nicholas Schott was asked to look into it. Um, it's been one of those... Uh, heavily debated subjects for a very long time. And um, back in last, well, last August, I think it was, last September, um, it was announced from the DCMS that it was possible, technically, uh, to broadcast local TV in the white space, effectively, the, the GI spectrum, as it's called, in 65 areas. And they put out a call uh, to say, if anyone's interested in having it in their local area, please put forward a very loose expression of interest. Um, so I did that in association with uh, Archant and some others, um, and then it was announced in December that Norwich was on that first list of licences to be awarded. What was interesting about this from, uh, from our perspective is I think people have had many different views of what local TV is about, um, and we went back really to look at what the government were trying to do, and actually we feel there is a place in the market for it, and actually a very important one. Um, and they're really fundamentally, they have a civic mission to help engage people again with the local democratic process. It's felt that actually there isn't enough engagement, that local politicians um, aren't necessarily in touch with local people. And most local people don't know what their councillors look like. If you walked down the street and bumped into your councillor, you probably wouldn't even have a clue that you had done so. Um, and actually, when you go back to that central mission, I think it's a very important one in a local um, democracy and one that we're very keen to make sure that we can um, uh, actually um, bring to um, the local audience. Um, when they pushed out um, the request for applications, there were two areas that didn't receive um, any prospective bids. So only 19 licences will now be awarded um, for local stations throughout the UK. And um, Ofcom are going through a process, they have a um, a broadcast licensing committee that's meeting every couple of weeks um, and after each licensing committee meeting they're announcing um, two or three um, station winners. To date um, uh, we have Brighton, Grimsby, Norwich, Cardiff and Bristol that have been announced. The rest are to come. So Mustard will appear, and that's the, obviously the, the name of the channel, we'll get to that in a minute. Mustard will be broadcast on Channel 8 on Freeview. Um, for those of you who haven't realised, if you look through your EPG slot, you will see a gap between Channel 7 and Channel 9. Most people just haven't even realised it's there, but that's where Mustard will be. Um, and it was one of the big things that the government did in terms of actually making sure that local TV stations would have a presence that people could find and would be very visible. There's no point having a local TV station down in sort of 700s because people won't find it naturally. And as we sort of... Um, just heard um, for the guys at Foolproof, um, you know, how people sort of find media. And again, from Charlie, I think it's, it's changing. And actually, visibility is a very important aspect of it. So how many people? It's one of the, the big questions um, that I've been asked is how many households? Um, throughout this bid process, I think, I think we probably approached it slightly differently from... Um, perhaps some of the other bidders, we looked at whether or not there was a business case to start with. We didn't assume necessarily there was. Um, so we started very much with, OK, how many people? Um, Ofcom pushed out a series of maps um, uh, back in December, sort of January, uh, looking at the, uh, the likely service area and uh, came up with 149,000 households um, served from the Tackleston transmitter. What they hadn't perhaps um, told some of the other bidders is that that included um, all households in the area that potentially could receive that signal and had an aerial potentially pointing to Tackleston. They hadn't discounted for satellite and cable viewers, um, which for us presented kind of an initial issue. 
Um, we looked at where Ofcom had got their data from, and it came um, from the digital switchover project that was done. So historically, the data was slightly out of date in terms of population. So we commissioned Experian um, to look at population forecasts for us for 2013 and beyond, um, and then looked at actually the penetration of platforms up here in terms of satellite, free view, and cable, and arrived at a figure of 110,000 households, which is... Um, you know, it's not enormous, but it is workable. There's approximately 1.9 adults per household up here, and um, that includes basically some teenagers, so it's a 15-plus audience. So then the next thing to look at was really, was there a demand for local TV? And for this, we, um, we commissioned um, uh, O&O, &O, down in London, very experienced um, TV uh, research, researchers and analysts um, to start giving us some data um, on what they knew um, and also we went through some of Ofcom's own research. This figure is from Ofcom when they started to look at it um, and it's absolutely clear that people are passionate still about their neighbourhood and finding out local news. Um, we wanted to know effectively how local that became. So we looked at, you know, are we talking about the region or my town or city or is it my community or neighbourhood? And, you know, we weren't particularly surprised to discover that actually community local neighbourhood is absolutely up at the top in terms of very interested. And then the next issue for us is, well, OK, we, we know that people are interested, but what in? Um, so we went through and looked at a variety of content categories that have been researched as to where people's focus um, was going to be in terms of a local TV station. So we have obviously local events, crime, traffic and transport, local government services, etc. And that started to give us the basis of um, uh, really building a business case because then we understood the audience, we understood um, the content categories that they potentially were interested in and we knew that there was demand. Um, we also wanted to look at audience share as to how many people we thought we were likely to reach um, we looked at many proxies, um, and unfortunately, since this is new, there aren't many easy proxies for us to sort of look at and, and take and, and draw some conclusions from. So what we did do is we, um, um, again, secured some barb data um, from March, just for one month, because we wanted to take a snapshot and actually see. Um, and obviously, you can see, in terms of the market share for that month, of the early evening news, that's not obviously all programmes all the time. We've got a, a, a rough share of the individuals, and, and roughly speaking, ITV is half that of the BBC. So we have assumed that Mustard will be half that of Anglia again. So we are starting on the basis of a 10% share. Um, obviously, we expect that to grow, um, and uh, we'd like to see it at 15% by the time we hit the third year of broadcasting, uh, but effectively, that's our benchmark. We also wanted to know a little bit more about the audience. So again, looking at personas, does this look familiar? So this was part of our process of looking at the business case again um, to see who was in that area. So we got the numbers, uh, we knew the interest, but actually what sort of programming potentially would we need to make and who could be watching? So there were two kind of key um, groups that came out. There are many of them, many subgroups, and if you want to look at our Ofcom bid, it is available on the Ofcom site. Um, so it's people can download it. We've redacted our financial information and our illustrative programme schedule, but everything else is there for you to see. Um, and you will see some of this uh, data on there. So we've got two core categories that we looked at, particularly Middle England, um, uh, consumers of mid-market media, very interested in home improvement um, and family life. And then um, Johan and Freya, as they're called. I mean, I love this on personas. <laughs> I think the previous one is Dennis and Sheila. Um, so uh, liberal opinions, it's a smaller group, um, but a very important one potentially uh, for some of the aspirations of, of Mustard too. Um, so in order to see whether or not we were on the right track, we came up with some ideas for news, uh, some sample programming, and then we put that, those programs into sort of focus group research. We conducted a number of uh, groups, uh, and we split it simply by age, and all of them were free view viewers. So we knew that they would be our core audience up here. Um, what was very interesting is whilst we, uh, we, did a, we did a lot of programming, we did two types of news, um, and then we did a sample of our magazine show, and one of the excerpts of that was uh, a debate on the Northern Distributor Road, 
we brought two councillors in um, to actually sort of battle it out. And Nick Conrad um, led the debate for us uh, very skillfully. Um, put them both through, yes, a very stringent and rigorous um, line of questioning, um, which I think both um, both um, guests found slightly uncomfortable from time to time. But it was fantastic to see the research coming back. Um, and it's, it's very strange. It's not something I've done before to have your work sort of debated and for you to sit at the back of the room with a whole pile of people that haven't got a clue who you are who are talking about it. Um, what was fantastic about it is all the things that we wanted to see, going back to what Ofcom was looking for, was that it was really interesting and they didn't know what their councillors looked like and it was nice to put a face to the name and suddenly they started to understand what those policies might be standing for and um, how local councillors were spending their money. So we also did, um, as part of our test broadcast, although obviously we couldn't do it for real, um, I've been very passionate about digital technology for a while. Um, those of you who know me know that uh, I'm a fairly early adopter on things, and social TV is something that is on our radar from day one. We might be small, but I think it's very important that people can actually respond. So we'll start with the more, if you like, um, or the easier... Uh, technologies for us to utilise, such as Twitter and email and text, but we want um, people to actually be able to respond during the programme, so by the time we get to the end of the programme, we hope that we'll be able to feed something back to those that have come in for a discussion. I'm not going to talk to you about all of the, uh, uh, the programme strands uh, tonight, I'm just not sure that there's time, but again, if you want to see some of our ideas or talk to me about them later, um, yeah, fine. So, um, what did we promise to Ofcom for our licence? Um, we promised Norwich News bulletins on the hour from 5pm to 10pm, from Monday to Friday. Um, we haven't got the money, having done the research, with an audience base of potentially 10,000 people uh, to broadcast all day, every day. Love to, but it's just not possible to start with, not until we've actually created a market up here and we see how much sort of audience penetration we can actually achieve. Um, we're going to be running an automated service the rest of the time, which we'll actually uh, take from existing news websites. So there will be something useful. Um, there will be travel and weather and local news and breaking news, but it's not going to be sort of a full programme feed. So Monday to Friday, yes, 5pm to 10pm, we will have 15-minute bulletins to be followed by traffic and local weather. And then five nights a week, we're going to have our own magazine show programme um, shamelessly entitled The Mustard Show. Um, uh, it took a long time to come up with that one. Um, dealing with local issues, events, uh, people and sport. And there is a different strand, there's a different main theme each night of the week. Um, and we did that intentionally to make sure that we were dealing with, going back to that earlier slide, of all those issues that people wanted. Um, looking at crime, looking at events, looking at governments, looking at local politics. And it was the easiest way on a fairly tight budget for us to actually accommodate programming that would meet those needs for a fairly diverse population. So what I also wanted to throw out to today and, and talk to you about tonight is it's fantastic we've won the licence. I'm absolutely over the moon. Um, and most importantly, I think for Norwich, it's a wonderful opportunity. Um, and whilst, yes, we have the licence, we are going to be producing news and a weeknight magazine show programme. We want to expand our offering, um, but can only do that with the support of the local production community. And for that, on, um, on that basis, we are going to be actively seeking local productions, but they will have to be pre-funded. Um, what's interesting about the BBC is the BBC are making a small commitment to local TV stations. It's 150,000 year one, 60,000 year two, and 20,000 year three, and all of those who work in TV that know that 20 grand doesn't go very far. So all those people who said, yes, the BBC are funding it, when it comes down to content, it's not loads. However, there is a further BBC content fund that potentially is available uh, for other programmes that we could pitch for. I think what's also quite exciting, um, and we have our first meeting coming up in October, is all the local licensees are banding together as per Ofcom's requirements um, uh, to form a company limited by guarantee. We will share programming um, where it's relevant and uh, potentially, obviously, there is the opportunity to consider syndication to other local operators if the format's right. 
So that's not a promise, but I think it potentially gives a wider audience to programme ideas and creative opportunities that wouldn't be there otherwise, and I'm absolutely delighted that Ofcom has done that. We're also are going to be working with IFA. Um, IFA um, fantastically have said yes, um, they would be delighted to work with us on our nostalgia programme. Um, one group that I didn't um, uh, mention earlier when I was talking through everybody is we also have obviously older uh, people in the area and we're keen to sort of do something which potentially is interesting for everybody. Um, curiously, what was fascinating is out of our focus group research, uh, those most interested in the nostalgia programming were actually the younger and, of course, the older. But those sort of age 30 to 45 were the least interested. Um, they were also the least interested in local politics, which I assume is just because they've got young families and they just really don't have the time and they want to switch off after a hard day at work and getting the kids to bed. That might be a sweeping statement, but um, I have a feeling that may be part of the issue. So we also are um, providing two 15-minute slots on a Monday for community programmes. Um, I was very keen, or we were very keen, to make sure that we also had access per for potentially underserved communities, those who perhaps don't have a voice and who have found working with local media organisations a bit challenging in the past. Um, we have obviously got to adhere to our broadcasting uh, code and commitments to, um, to Ofcom, but... If there are production companies that potentially want to partner with local community groups or charities or perhaps, you know, some of the non-speaking uh, English groups up here, I think it would be, it'd be welcomed. And I know already that um, some groups are out there starting to look at what might be possible for access to that space. So those two 15-minute slots on a Monday will be provided at no charge to those groups at all. And then Mustard Digital, um, we're very conscious of the fact that TV is changing um, and our approach to this was not um, going down a traditional TV route. Um, one of the reasons I think it is so fantastic that Archant is behind it is ultimately they're a media provider, they're a news provider and they tell stories. Um, you're all very familiar with the fact they tell stories in print, um, but they actually just tell stories, that's what the guys do. And actually then bringing a broadcast strand into that is an extension of that provision. It's a different format and it does require different skills, but fundamentally at its core, it's what's there already. So Mustard Digital um, will start in a uh, smallish form from January next year and build as we go towards October. Um, what you may not realise is the huge um, uh, presence, effectively, that their existing sites have. Um, for Uniques, these are staggering uh, stacks, given the amount of people that are actually up here. And it does show that, you know, locally, both these brands uh, for news are, you know, loved and admired and very much visited. So we have an early um, example of what Mustard Online might look like. Um, this is not finalised yet. We're working on it right now. And we will cu curate the best local content. So we'll have our own content. We will be working um, with teams to create news features um, and other material for the online platform before we launch on Freeview. But also we want to curate third-party content. Um, and I think that perhaps is quite an interesting opportunity for some of you. Um, we can discuss um, in the future how that will manifest, but potentially we can help bring the audience to some of your content. And I think that's a really exciting thing. So you potentially could have a channel on Mustard um, for your own content. And I know there's a couple of people in this room already that we've started talking to about that. So I think for now, that's probably it. Um, I hope that's been helpful um, and subject to the build out at the Tackleston transmitter, which is not our responsibility, will be on air on the 1st of October 2013 on Channel 8. Thank you. <laughs>